Okay, so go ahead and grab your notes for cellular respiration part two and make sure that you're taking notes, you're highlighting and writing additional stuff down on those notes. So go ahead and pull those out. Just a reminder um, from the last video, there's three parts to cellular respiration. The first part, we drew this in class, was glycolysis. Then the second and third step are both inside the mitochondria. So the second step is the Krebs cycle. And the third step is the electron transport chain. So on the last video, we drew out glycolysis and we said that glycolysis is where three sugar, where one glucose molecule, which is six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, one glucose molecule, which is six carbons, is split apart into two G3P molecules. And remember we said this takes, let's draw it all out, this takes negative two ATP and it makes positive four ATP. So glycolysis has a net of two ATPs. And remember, all organisms do glycolysis. All organisms do glycolysis, and it doesn't require any oxygen. Okay, so today's video, so that was all review. Today's video is specifically about the Krebs cycle. Okay, so it says, on number one, it says, if oxygen is present, okay, so if oxygen is present within the eukaryotic cells, so if there's oxygen, it's aerobic then the cell is going to do the Krebs cycle. Okay, so here's this showing you the pyruvate or G3P on the outside. So glycolysis happened on the outside. G3P is what we learned in class, but here it's pyruvate. And it's got to go inside, inside the cell and become acetyl-CoA. So highlight that word, acetyl-coenzyme A. In order to enter into the mitochondria, that pyruvate must be converted into, circle the word, acetyl-coenzyme A. So circle that word for me. The, it must be converted into acetyl-coenzyme A. This is referred to pyruvate conversion. So the pyruvate has to be converted into acetyl-coenzyme A. Final product is acetyl-coenzyme A. Okay, so digging into the Krebs cycle now. And it's pretty, all you have to know is pretty easy. So the Krebs cycle, it says this occurs in the inner mitochondrial space. And so actually I want you to draw this. If here's your mitochondria and here's your cristae. So the cristae make a little circle on the inside. The Krebs cycle happens right there. The Krebs cycle happens on the inner mitochondrial space where there's room to work. Remember, the main purpose of the Krebs cycle is to highlight make electron carriers, or underline that word for me, make electron carriers. And out beside electron carriers, I want you to write the letters N-A-D-H and F-A-D-H. So you're, in the Krebs cycle, you're making N-A-D-H and F-A-D-H. Okay, so those are electron carriers. They're like school buses. They pick up the electrons. Okay, so in each acetyl-CoA, so look at the picture. Each acetyl-CoA makes 3-NADH, so right here, 3-NADH, 1-FADH, and 1-ATP. And so remember, ATP is energy there. Each electron carrier can carry, underline, two electrons. Underline, two electrons. The first negative electron cancels the positive charge. So we did this in the last on photosynthesis. But remember, there's NAD plus right here. And the first electron makes that go away. The second electron puts an H on there because it's a hydrogen electron. So... Here, I want you to write this in. N-A-D plus makes N-A-D-H. So I want you to write that in. N-A-D plus makes N-A-D-H. And then it says, so a positive hydrogen will be able to attach 
to a negative FAD plus or NAD. FADH. Okay, so the next step, so we're moving on to the third step of cellular respiration. Here's that. And that's the electron transport chain. Yes, this should ring a bell. You've seen this before. Okay, so this time it's it's like actually this time it's upside down. So the NADH and the FADH made in the Krebs cycle are going to drop off their electrons right there. So in photosynthesis, remember, the electrons came from water. Well, this time the electrons come from NADH and FADH. And the electrons go down the electron transport chain, and they bind with oxygen, and that makes water. So if you think back to the equation of cellular respiration, the water is made, well, it's made in the electron transport chain. Okay, so then the hydrogens, the hydrogen ions are pumped in, no, hydrogen ions are pumped out of the cristae. So this is happening, the electron transport chain is happening in the cristae, in the cristae. So it's happening in the cristae and the hydrogen protons are being pumped into that space. The hydrogen protons go through ATP synthase, and that makes ATP. So this should all really be a review from photosynthesis. The only difference is the electrons, the electrons are coming from NADH and FADH go into water. So that's backwards from photosynthesis. And the hydrogens are going up. Okay, so let's read in the next what this says. This occurs on the underline, the word inner mitochondrial space. So this time I want you to draw it this way. So I want you to draw this on the notes beside electron transport chain. You're going to draw mitochondria. You're going to draw the, oh, the cristae again. But this time, put a little X right there. Because it's, it's happening on the membrane. It's happening on the cristae. So write in the word cristae. I wrote it right here. Now you write it in. This membrane is folded produced as there is room for more electron transport chain. So the cristae is all folded up, and that allows for there to be more electron transport chain room. It's always in a membrane. So for bacteria, it's actually in the cell membrane. And that's really cool. For bacteria, it's actually in the cell membrane. The whole process is controlled by the release of energy. It says electrons move two at a time. So electrons move two at a time down towards, underline the word, oxygen. Because that makes H2O. That makes H2O. Okay, so the energy from NADH and FADH are used to produce ATP. So go back and look at this picture. Energy from NADH, the electron from NADH goes down, binds with oxygen, and that makes water. The hydrogens go up through Big Mama, or through ATP synthase, which I call Big Mama, because Big Mama turns and makes ATP. So this is ATP synthase, or Big Mama is its nickname in my head. Free energy from the electrons fuels the active transport. Okay, so I, the first little I, hydrogen ions are pumped into the space. Okay, that makes a, underline the word, concentration gradient. So the concentration of hydrogens makes a concentration gradient. What a concentration gradient is, is where all these hydrogens are right here. So you've made a, concentration gradient of hydrogens. They're released and go through ATP synthase, making ATP. This is another example of energy coupling, and that's where two processes work together. Active transport is pumped, the hydrogens, and then passive transports, the, the hydrogens flow down, okay? Chemiosmosis. Let's go ahead and define chemiosmosis again. Chemiosmosis is where the hydrogen turn the ATP synthase. Okay, so total, you made 